What's going on? Today, I wanna cover five different mistakes you wanna avoid as a beat maker. And I want you to avoid these same five mistakes I made. Number one, never using EQ. So the importance of using EQ is to not have elements fight each other in the same frequency space. For example, if you have a kick right here, you have a bass right here, you don't want those two elements clashing against each other because they share the same frequency band. So you want to carve out the lower end frequencies, maybe in the bass or maybe in the kick, just depends on how you want your mix to be. If you want your kick to stand out, carve out some of those frequencies in the bass so you don't have those things clashing. So you wanna utilize EQ when necessary. Mistake number two, not separating your elements, not separating your tracks. So having everything on one single track, like all your drums on one track, plus your instruments, your guitar and your bass, that's not a good idea because if you're going to structure out a song or build out a song, how are you gonna drop out elements? It's not gonna work because you have everything on the same track. How do you adjust the volume of each individual element? You can't because everything's on the same track. So you wanna avoid that. You want to have every element on this individual track. Rookie mistake number three, hard quantizing everything. So what you don't wanna do as a producer or beat maker is quantize every element in your track because then it sounds robotic and it sounds unrealistic. Unless of course you're trying to do something like EDM or techno, even then, they still have some sort of groove or swing to their track. You want your tracks to feel like someone's actually playing it. Like if you're playing a piano, you don't want to hard quantize that. You want it to feel like someone's actually playing the piano. Even the drums, you want it to sound realistic. You definitely don't want to overly quantize everything. Mistake number four, no song structure. You're just using a straight up four bar loop. That becomes monotonous. It becomes boring. You're gonna put your listener to sleep. It's simple. You gotta have some type of song structure. You gotta have some drop offs. Drop off the kick or something like that. Uh, drop off the bass or solo something for a quick second. You know, just having a straight up loop, four bar loop, eight bar loop can be boring. But it also depends on, you know, the intent of the, the song too. Because sometimes some people can write to a four bar loop or eight bar loop and write out a whole song. But even still then, um, there's still some dropouts here and there, some, some kick dropouts, there's something that's going on. And mistake number five is not really having a good drum selection. And what does that mean is, let's say you start off with a melody loop or something like that, or a good sample or something like that. And you just start picking random drums. Sometimes you want to be intentional about what type of drums you select for your beat because that can that could actually really make or break the beat. There's nothing worse than having like a, a really dope sample, a dope loop, and then like the drums come on there and it sounds corny. So, or sound really weak. So you wanna put some thought into your drum selection. Also just take some time out to pick out a good set of drums for like different genres. So if you have like a boom bap genre that you wanna use, have like a good set of sounds that you wanna use for that genre. If you're trying to do trap, have like a good you know, set of sounds, trap sounds, kick, hi-hat, claps, snares, you know, just have those together. I think the biggest thing is just having organized drums and well-placed drums so you can use them as needed. So, so those are my five rookie mistakes that I want you to avoid. So let me know which rookie mistakes that you experienced as you were coming up as a producer. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. All right, I'll see you in the next video.